All right, so we are uh, introducing assignment nine today. So if we go to assignment sheets, this is our final three point assignment before our final um, art project. And underneath the assignment sheet, I have the link to an inspiring process exploration in digital painting, which is actually using one of your final presentations, right? So this was Chris's presentation. I just reminded you, I thought this was a really great example of, of what this assignment is because it's single subjects, kind of finding your own way of painting something that you think has personality and you're interested in. You can use the colors that you want. You can use the effect, effects that you want. You can combine different techniques the way you want. But it is important to remind you how digital painting is different than digital coloring, right? So underneath assignment eight, where we did our spot illustration with our type design for a poster, I have an exhaustive explanation of digital coloring and painting underneath it. And that's always worth reviewing. And this is my additions to, to Andy's presentation. But basic steps for digital coloring, you start with a concept and a sketch. And this could be completely from your imagination, right? Which is another place where it differs from most digital painting. Most digital painting is based on some form of reference. And then um, digital coloring will have a clean outline at some part of its process. So we clean that outline up as much as possible by making it a vector. And then you approach it, this is where it overlaps with digital painting somewhat. You approach it with flat local color, which means the color that the thing is, <laughs> despite any lighting condition. And then you can move on to duotone color, splitting lights and darks of that basic base color, uh, either soft edged or hard edged. And then you could go on to, to full color spectrum if you like. So just really quickly going through it, this is examples of flat local color, right? These are examples of flat local color behind a clear outline. These are examples that are finished of flat local color. Right? It's got that kind of vintage look where just one color ink fills in the whole local color. And important to note her hair, if you remember from old comics, black hair has blue as the fill. That is still flat color because black and white are not colors. Right? Here is just flat local color used in a basic animation. And here is flat color that's local color which means it's the flat color that the thing actually is despite lighting conditions, which is very brown and boring, versus what is called flatting, which is what digital colorists do professionally to prepare a piece for color. So you notice flatting is not meant to be realistic local color, right? Flatting is just meant to be crazy colors that are easy to select so that then you could change them into <laughs> the color you think they really are. All right. So then moving on through that, this is my favorite professional flat colorist. His name's Dave Stewart. Uh, most famously, he works with Mike Mignola. He does a lot for Dark Horse Comics. But what I love about his, his coloring of Hellboy in particular, which are Mike Mignola's ink work, is that it's almost entirely flat. And he'll just add the most subtle gradations in the finish but his flats are just really, really well chosen. So flat coloring is not easy coloring. It's all about kind of finding the right colors. <laughs> and that's true of digital painting too. Doing a base coat of painting, you have to choose the right shapes and the right colors, you know, for your final. Okay, what do you do once you have the base color? This will be true of digital painting too. You can split it up into lights and darks. This is called duotone, whether it's hard edged or soft edged. So here we have really clean hard edge duotone where the outline has then been removed. So you can see very clearly the two different tones of skin, the two different tones of red, the two different tones of blue, the two different tones of yellow. Uh, even her hair, notice that her hair is no longer black and blue, it's dark blue and light blue. And then in animation, we see this all the time. Underneath, usually a pretty thin outline, but we see that duotone hard edge or cut edge, or sometimes called cell shaded coloring. And animation can really inspire 
you know, flat illustration as well. And so you get all these variations of the local colors. And this was done even before digital, like putting in the two tones for each color. And then we have soft edge duotone. Again, been done for a long time. And it depends what the base color is that you're printing. And then full spectrum. This is where we get closer to painting, right? It's This is still digital coloring. It's behind a, a real or implied outline. But you can see how we have purple and we have pinks and reds and oranges all in the same local color area. So it's in just his skin tone here, this is a, a Matisse, is orange and green and yellow and just has every color in it, right? In professional illustration, we'll see full spectrum in more subtle ways, right? So you'll see on her skin, it goes from the pinks to the yellows. Right, and those are not part of the same color family. They're in different parts of the color wheel. So this is no longer duotone. It is warm color and cool color within the same local color area like her skin. And so that is full spectrum. And then here we see it with this massive color hold of the, the glint off of her bracelets, but that makes her, her cloak, you know, go from blue to orange to yellow. And that's, you know, and the, the purples and the yellows in her skin, all of that's full spectrum coloring. Here we have it with kind of watercolor treatment. Here we have it with digital coloring. So there's, there's lots of examples of full spectrum coloring. As you'll notice, as full spectrum is used, the line work becomes less and less important, right? And the line work can get replaced by color, like his back there, the, the black line is turned to orange, and that's called a color hold. And it becomes more and more like painting, and it becomes more and more individually stylistic and recognizable through the color choices. And so digital painting definitely has the most personality, right, where you can showcase this even more because you don't have to be contained by an outline. Here we have pretty bold full spectrum coloring. And here we have just more and more examples, right, in digital and in traditional art of full spectrum color. But the fuller color usually means thinner line art, you know, and definitely less graphic kind of full bleed blacks. Now, this is actually a digital painting at this stage, right, because the outline has gone away. But what really has happened is this is still digital coloring, because it had a real outline. But that outline has now been changed to colors, right? Especially around her lasso, that black line has changed to a, a darker yellow line. So this is still digital coloring, though it looks like digital painting, and it is digital painting as well. This is where they dovetail. <clears throat> because not only is this almost full spectrum color, it's really just still soft edge duotone, but it's really highly rendered. Um, because with the color holds, especially in the hair and the highlights, you'll see that that's how you can replace your outline with something else, which is just a different way of getting to the same end result that digital painting gets you to. Here's another example of color holds. With the lasso, again, you see how the outlines totally change. And you get the glows that are affecting all the coloring underneath. And they're called color holds because they have to go above the black layer. They have to, the printer actually has to hold out that space with the black inks so that your color can fill it in. So here are some color hold examples. This is a nice little gif that shows how those blacks get replaced with blue, you know, for the final coloring. Um, this is a nice example. So on and on. Okay, we're going to skip all the bin day dot stuff and go right to digital painting. So how is digital painting different? You'll see that the end result is almost the same of this kind of photorealistic Wonder Woman painting sketch and this one. But the big difference is how it's set up. So it's never a clean outline. It's just a sketch that's then painted on top of. And so the steps of digital painting are not as rigid as for digital coloring. 
you'll see here this Wonder Woman, this beautiful example. I really like this painting style, and we're going to be learn how learn how to make brushes. But it just starts with a sketch, and then it just refines and refines. And sometimes the edges get cleaner, and then sometimes they're erased and pushed back. And it's the artist really just finding their way. So it starts with a digital sketch, it refines parts of it, and then just kind of starts building with shapes directly. Here we have our, our in-class example by Andy, and you'll notice that he builds on top of a sketch, but it never gets to refine line work. Right? It's all about the shapes that matter, because they overtake everything by the end. So that's what we're going to go for. Um, and because we only have today and next class to work on the digital painting, we're, trying, we're going to try not to obsess about getting everything perfect. And that includes the sketch and the line work as well. <clears throat> so you are asked to do a single object. I recommend uh, a face or an animal on a blank background. Open up for me. And you'll see that in the past student examples. And you'll see it in my past examples as well. And animals we've had some um, exposure to with our creature assignment, and you want to make it look believable with anatomy and all of that. And we've seen some good presentations on, on that, right? But with portraits, we haven't really dealt with those yet. So I have some other resources for you that might be useful. So in our course, if you go to the links page, not only will you have handouts, about digital coloring and painting, but you also have uh, this head design template and rules handout, which might be useful to you, especially if you're new to drawing um, caricatures or portraits. And I have a printout of it on the, on the bench in the middle of class there. So this is a PDF. You can just bring it onto your computer. And you'll just see it gives some basic approaches. Now this is good for cartooning. It's good for uh, realistic portraiture. It's good for imaginary drawing, but here are some of the rules that matter. Realistic heads are egg shapes, right? If you cut that egg shape in half both ways, just like an Easter egg and kind of drawing on it, uh, that middle line will be the realistic eye line. That's where our eyes fit on our skull. And those eyes in realism fit five across, right? always with one eye width between the eyes. And then our nose will fit halfway from the, the eye line to the bottom of the chin. And then our mouth will fit in third lines from the bottom of the nose to the chin. So this can kind of help, and you'll see those broken down even in these cartoons. Uh, the basic tips are that the base of the nose is always one eye width wide. This is how you can check your proportions. The ears fit nicely between the eye line and the nose line. That's on a, an average adult. As you, as you get older, your ears keep growing. So they'll grow beyond those two marks. But they'll always be centered there. So you can see that the eye line and the nose line line up with the ear. And the hairline is roughly two-thirds up from the eye line. So we have a nice kind of slightly high hairline there, kind of a generic hairline, but that's where hair starts coming out of the head. So that's something to kind of check your reference on. Now in order to do a digital painting, it is helpful to have photo reference. Not because we're trying to make a photorealistic painting, there are lots of different ways to paint, but because it's nice to reference lighting and we're not trying to rely on outline. So I am going to do Admiral Nelson, who lost to Napoleon at Waterloo, right? No, who won? Yeah, who beat Napoleon at Waterloo. <laughs> um, here we have this, this old painting of Admiral Nelson. There are several. A lot of them he has a very silly hat. But I want to focus more on just the shapes and the colors. And I like this kind of uh, brush strokiness. But it's not very contemporary. So I'm also looking at this stained glass piece that a friend of mine did as a sketch. This is fused glass. And I kind of like this painting style, right? Which is done in a totally traditional media. And I'm going to be inspired by these two to make my own digital painting of Admiral Nelson. So that's where we'll get started. <laughs> 